in this lead video lecture i am talking about some essential equations from rotation of rigid bodies so if you are preparing for some essential exam or regular college exam the reviewing the equations that are required to solve the problems that is physics problem is essential so i'm illustrating i'm explaining all important equations from this chapter that is rotation of rigid bodies okay the first equation i am talking about today is the instantaneous angular velocity so instantaneous angular velocity is denoted by omega where z right here is the axis around which the particle is rotating okay so the instantaneous angular velocity of a rigid body rotating around the z axis this one is given by the limit of the body's average angular velocity as the time interval approaches to zero look at here delta t is approaching zero that means we are taking instantaneous velocity with very very small time right time is very very small that is equal to the instantaneous rate of change of body's angular coordinate d theta by dt okay so this is the instantaneous angular velocity what is theta the theta is the angular coordinate okay in the rotational motion we use the angular terms like r and the theta these are the coordinates in case of the rotational bodies why because in cartesian coordinate we use x and y right to locate the position of an object but in case of the angular velocities we have to use angular coordinate system the angular coordinate systems are r and theta okay so right now the our coordinate here is theta okay let's go to the second important equation instantaneous angular acceleration which is denoted by alpha z the instantaneous angular acceleration of a rigid body rotating around the z axis alpha z this one alpha z okay is denoted uh, given by the limit of the body's average angular acceleration as the time interval approaches to zero limit delta t is approaching to zero del omega z divided by delta t okay which is equal to the instantaneous rate of change of body's angular velocity okay that is denoted by d omega z divided by dt the third important equation is the equation of angular velocity at constant angular acceleration remember this one when you are applying this equation that is equation of angular velocity you have to remember this can be applied only if angular acceleration is constant okay so this omega z is the angular velocity at time t of a rigid body and we can apply as i said remember this point the angular acceleration should be constant to apply these couple of equations starting from this equation okay omega z equal to omega not z which is angular velocity of body at time zero that is the starting time plus alpha z this one here is the constant angular acceleration of the body okay the acceleration in in case of the rotational motion is denoted by greek letter alpha and a t here is the time period the time okay the time taken okay so let's go to the another equation which is most important angular position to find the angular position of the body rotating in the uh, in the angular motion angular position is given by theta minus theta naught where theta is the angular position at time t of a 
rigid body with constant angular acceleration and theta naught this one here theta naught is angular position of body 8 times t naught this is equal to half of initial angular velocity which is omega naught z angular velocity of body 8 times t you can say that way also plus omega z omega z is angular velocity of body 8 times t where t is time okay simply time this time you can express same equation that is angular position in another form like theta minus theta naught is equal to omega naught z t plus half alpha z t squared that is angular position a time t of a rigid body with constant angular acceleration can be given by omega naught z that is the angular velocity of body a time zero multiplied by time plus half constant angular acceleration of the body alpha t squared remember if there is the analogous equation in the linear motion linear kinematic equation right which is x equal to x naught i can write it down for you remember this one x minus x naught is equal to b naught x t plus half uh, a t square right a x t square so this is uh, along the x axis just one dimensional motion okay so in that case also we we use uh we consider velocity uh, angular uh, acceleration constant okay so now let's move into the another equation which is angular velocity at constant angular acceleration okay so it can also be uh, written in this form the angular velocity at time t of a rigid body omega z squared is equal to angular velocity of body at time t squared plus 2 alpha z theta minus theta naught okay so you are now familiar with the terms what they are okay now the relatively different equation that connects linear speed with angular speed is this one so this is very important because you are connecting the linear speed of a point on a rotating rigid body with the angular speed of the rotating rigid body angular velocity is denoted by this omega and the linear velocity is denoted by b b equal to r omega what is r r is the distance of that point that we are talking about from rotational axis okay so if you are given omega and r you can find b or if you are given r and b you can find omega that is angular speed okay so now let's talk about the tangential acceleration so tangential acceleration is denoted by a 10 is equal to the rate of change of linear speed of that point this one is rate of change of linear speed of the that point equal to r d omega by dt because if i insert the value of look at here if you go above b is equal to r omega right i can insert the r is constant i can take out from the uh, differentiation symbol d d by dt dt and then d omega by dt what is d omega by dt d omega by dt is alpha alpha is what angular acceleration right angular acceleration is rate of change of angular velocity so d omega by dt equal to alpha alpha is rate of change of angular speed of the body so r is the distance of the point from rotational axis okay so next important equation from this chapter is the centripetal acceleration the meaning of centripetal centri means towards the center petal means lobbing right central lobbing or center shaking acceleration that means this force is this acceleration is always acting towards the center of a circle let me uh, make a circle right here this is a circle right and this central point the acceleration is always acting towards the center this direction that's why we call it centripetal right the centripetal acceleration it can also be denoted by a rad 
because it acts along the radius of the circle, right? That's why the area is equal to V squared, V is the linear speed of that point, divided by R. What is R? Distance of that point from rotational axis, okay? Omega here is again angular speed of the body. So, centripetal acceleration of a point on a rotating rigid body denoted by a rad is equal to square of linear speed of that point divided by the distance of that point from rotational axis. This is equal to if you uh, put value from the previous uh, equation, if you remember v equal to r omega, right? v square means r square omega square and divided by r, I can cancel one r and I will end it up with this expression, right? Which is uh, uh, r omega squared. So, a rad equal to v squared by r or in angular velocity term, you can write down like r omega squared. I hope you understand this equation, okay? Now, let's move to the another equation, which is the moment of inertia. And the moment of inertia of a body for a given rotational axis, rotational axis is given to you and moment of inertia is represented by I and given by the M1 R1 square plus M2 R2 square and so on. Go ahead with the number of particles given in the system, which is equal to some of the product of mass and this, the perpendicular distance of the particle from axis of rotation is squared, okay? What are M1, M2 and M3? These are the masses of the particles that make up the body, okay? And what are R, R1, R2, R3 and so on? These are perpendicular distances of the particles from rotational axis. Remember this, these distances are not uh, distances like making other angles that is per making per perpendicular distances right making 90 degree with the axis of rotation so you must remember this point okay so this is expression for moment of inertia in general you can write down like uh, you know m r squared so this is simple general expression for moment of inertia okay Moving into the another equation is very important equation, rotational kinetic energy of rigid body. As we know, the kinetic energy for linear motion k is equal to half mv square. You know, there is the symmetry between these equations, right? Exact the same thing, half mv square, half i omega square. It's like the mass, uh, the moment of inertia acts like a mass in the case of the rotational motion of a rigid body okay so kinetic energy which is the same symbol as like the linear kinetic energy the rotational kinetic energy of a rigid body rotating around an axis denoted by capital k is given by half i that is moment of inertia of body for rotational axis omega squared angular speed of body squared Okay, so this is very important equation to find the rotational kinetic energy of a rigid body. If you are, uh, you know, in the in the numerical problem, sometimes uh, I is not given and some other informations are given to find I. In that case, maybe mass is given, mass of an object is given and the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation is given. So you can calculate I if you know omega already or uh, maybe you know the linear velocity, then you can find out the omega and i. Then calculate rotational kinetic energy of the rigid body. Okay. Okay. Uh, going into the another equation is the parallel axis theorem. This is very, very important equation to find the moment of inertia about the axis parallel to the axis passing through the center of mass okay so moment of inertia of a body for a rotation axis through point p okay and this axis remember is parallel to the axis passing through the center of mass okay icm here is cm means center of mass okay 
ICM is the moment of inertia of body for a parallel axis through center of mass. So IP equal to ICM plus MD squared. M is the total mass of the object body and D is the distance between two parallel axes. So for example, this is the axis passing through the center of mass, let's say CM, right? And uh, uh, there is another axis which is parallel to this axis. So D is the distance between them. What is mass? Mass is M, is the whole mass of this object, right? So in this way, you can find the moment of inertia about the parallel axis, okay? So hope you understand all these formulas and you will be better prepared if you review uh, these formulas before attempting any competitive examination or college examination. If you like this video, you can subscribe it, you can make a comment. Thank you.